Good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to have continue our livestock management CDE webinar series. Uh, we are going to be discussing the dairy station uh, with a disciplinary focus around breeding, genetic, and reproductive management. Uh, we've got today with us uh, Mr. Aaron Meritz. Uh, Aaron uh, coordinates this station and he is going to walk through what your students could expect from the dairy station in 2018. Aaron? Okay, welcome everybody. Um, as Dr. Riling mentioned, this is the dairy section uh, of breeding, genetic, and reproductive management. I will walk through some, some PowerPoint slides and uh, give you what I expect uh, your students to know. So we, we want some objectives. The students should understand uh, sire selection and what's involved in that, looking at the traits that a, that a sire brings to the, to the pedigree and to the mating, and also understand the difference between uh, phenotype and genotype. Sire proofs, uh, we want them to understand that they are a tool for your genetic improvement. They're used to <clears throat> compare animal to animal or sire to sire, and they're expressed as either a plus or a minus value with the average being zero. Uh, they're expressed in different units, whether it be pounds or uh, inches or um, different percentages, but they are different units for each trait. Some of the things we'll be talking about in our sire selection, there's a lot of uh, acronyms that go into it. Uh, things like uh, net merit, total performance index, all of these that you see listed here are uh, things your students should know and understand how they pertain to a SIRE selection um, application. So most of those things will be found on what we call a SIRE proof. So we, we want you to understand how to read a SIRE proof and answer questions based off of them and uh, how we use them to select the proper bowl that we want to use for each mating. Primarily, what your, uh, we want your students to understand is most of the information will be coming from the bottom half of this page. What you see here highlighted uh, that has been enlarged and also down here in your individual trait selections. So we will ask questions based on, for instance, which bull would you use to increase milk production the most? So we want students to understand that this bull is plus 3,000 pounds of milk, while this bull is only plus around 1,200. So the correct answer would be A. Which bull has a lower percentage of stillborn calves from his daughters? So we know that daughter calving ease is listed here. Uh, and this daughter, this cow actually, the, the daughters of this bull actually have only 3.6% stillborns. So those are things going back to the acronym page uh, that you will need to understand what all of these mean and how they're used in sire selection. So the use of the, the data and the genetic evaluations, again, we want your students to be able to answer some basic test questions and be able to do that sire summary quiz that we talked about, answer which bull would you select if you wanted to do following. Use those sire selection acronyms that we talked about and those sire sample, sample sire summaries. You don't necessarily have to use those exact ones because all the bulls will have the same acronyms and the same uh, information in the summary, but those are two examples that we've given you. So phenotype is what we see in an animal, what we can measure, genotype plus the environment. Selection is based mainly on phenotype. Uh, uh, phenotype is the look of the animal, okay? It also is what we can measure, things like milk production, milk composition, the milk fat, the milk protein percent in the milk, things like conception rates, reproductive traits, health traits, um, uh, productive life. In the beef industry, we would kind of look at weaning weights or 
or yearling weights or calving ease. Those types of things are phenotypic. We want you to understand the difference in relative heritability of traits. Not all traits are heritable, are, have the same amount of heritability. For instance, reproduction in the dairy cow, that's a low heritability trait. Stature and mature size is very high heritable. So the, if you're trying to make a genetic gain, you can make a genetic gain faster on a trait that is more heritable. And heritability is actually, if I got two different animals, is the differences between those animals that is actually due to genetics. Correct. It takes the environment out of it and the management out of it. So in terms of reproduction, um, we want the students to be able to understand and identify the basic reproductive organs, structures, and hormones of the reproductive tract. Be able to outline a synchronization program and know how to do some art uh, artificial insemination in terms of the tools used, the proper way to do it. Okay. Uh, also, the other thing we want you to know is some dairy reproductive numbers, and I'll go through some of those. Let's start with the reproductive tract. We need you to be able to identify certain parts of the reproductive tract. Certain parts of the ovary for, uh, you know, and the fallopian tubes. Be able to identify those. What the structures of the ovary are. And then also what they do and what they respond to. A follicle grows in response to FSH and it secretes estrogen. A corpus luteum, for instance, secretes progesterone and helps maintain pregnancy. So for each structure, we want you to be able to identify and understand their purpose and how they interact with the different hormones. The hormones that we have listed here are ones that we feel that are important. For instance, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH it causes the follicle to grow. Estrogen is secreted by the fo follicles and provides estrus behavior. That's what brings an animal into estrus. A luteinizing hormone causes ovulation. Progesterone is again, it's secreted by the, the corpus luteum or the CL. It also helps maintain pregnancy. It's what tells the cow that she is pregnant and keeps her from coming back in heat. Progesterone is also uh, important when we come and talk about ester synchronization and how it applies to ester synchronization. Prostaglandin is, again, it is a hormone that's secreted by the uterus. It happens as the egg starts to atrophy and it restarts the, the productin or the reproductive cycle. Again, it's very important in estrus synchronization. So the dairy industry uses estrus synchronization quite heavily, especially in lactating cows. We want you to be able to understand a common estrogen or estrus synchronization program such as OVSYNC or double OVSYNC. These two are very common in the dairy industry. So uh, synchronization is a series of estrogen injections causing the animals to have estrus at the same time so that we can breed them. In an off-sync program, we start on day one with the GnRH shot. Seven days later, with a prostaglandin shot. 56, and we're gonna say 48 to 56 hours later, we give them another GnRH shot. And then about 16 hours later, we we breed those animals. So typically this would be Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. And maybe more specifically Monday, the following Monday, Wednesday afternoon, and Thursday morning. Therefore the 56, 16 hours. It seems to work very well in most dairy operations because uh, cows are typically milked twice a day or sometimes three times a day. And if you have locking stanchions, they work very well in that program and able to get those cows synchronized while they're eating after they've been milked in their normal daily routine. So the difference between off-sync 
And double off sync is just that. We've added these three injections or double off sync before we start the actual off sync program. So this program would look something like Monday, the following Monday, Thursday, Monday, the following Monday, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning. So this is about a 28 day cycle. You see there's 10, 17, 24, 26, about 28 days. This is typically used to help prepare the reproductive tract to, to come in heat. So this would maybe be done on a day 28 after calving, knowing we're gonna breed on day 50 or, or day 35, right? whatever the days are there. But typically it's done about 14 to 18 days ahead of when you wanna start the uh, synchronization program. So what is the advantage of the double ob sync compared to the single ob sync? The advantage of a double ob sync is that you get all of the cows cycling before we start this GNRH program and we get the uteruses cleaned out. So if we start this on day 30, so this would be day 40, 47, 49, we would be breeding on day 50 post calving. This allows us to make sure that uterus is completely cleaned out, fully involuted, and cycling so that the OVSYNC program works. Understand this, know how to uh, implement it. That leads us to the possible hands-on activities that, that we want you to be able to do. One is to create an OVSYNC program. So you may be given a blank calendar with uh, you know, lines to fill in whether you need to give a GnRH shot, whether you need to breed, whether you need to give a luteolized shot, prostaglandin shot, those types of things in an actual, set up an actual synchronization program. Another possibility that you may be asked to do is how to demonstrate how to properly load an AI gun to to artificially inseminate a cow, okay? I can tell you right now, we're not gonna have you artificially inseminate a cow, but I want you to understand what steps are taken before that. Um, there is an excellent YouTube video to watch on steps on how to do it. There is also um, a, an attachment that, that Dr. Rowling will put in. It gives you step-by-step -step with pictures on how to properly take semen starting from the semen that's in the tank to get it ready to be put inside the cow. Oh, I just launched the video. It's okay, you can show it for a little bit. Yeah, where do I get back? Okay. Okay. So basic definitions. <clears throat> These are terms that we feel are extremely important when it comes to reproductive knowledge in the dairy industry. Know what they are and know what they do. So if I asked you um, what is a common uh, industry name for a product for a prostaglandin that's used in the dairy industry, you know, I want you to understand that that is lutelice. Okay. Heat detection, estrus synchronization program. What do these terms mean? I had mentioned before we want some dairy numbers to understand some numbers. So some of these numbers, age at puberty, the length of the estrus cycle, the duration of estrus, when ovulation occurs, what the gestation length is. How many days after calving do we typically wait before we start a breeding program? So a voluntary waiting period or a postpartum interval. So know these numbers, know uh, numbers that are typically present in, when you're talking to someone about dairy reproduction. So those are the things that I have that, that we feel like are important that you should know. Know that you will not be asked every question that we went through, but those are all possibilities of things that could be on the exam and things that we expect that, that you should be um, proficient in.
And we, we will provide uh, to the FFA advisors through the CDE uh, website those links that show uh, material related to the artificial insemination uh, as well as some additional materials that you might be able to use in terms of preparation. Yeah, there's also one I believe on the acronyms for the bullproofs. What does TPI mean? What does NM mean? Uh, what what do those terms mean? There there should be a, uh, an additional attachment that included to help you study those. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us or using this webinar in preparation for the uh, live dairy component of the livestock management CDE. Uh, we have one more remaining, and that is next Wednesday, uh, March 7th, and that will be on poultry. With that, we'll see you at 4 o'clock next week. Thank you very much, and have a good day.